In this session, we'll discuss about physical redundancy with respect to fault tolerance in distributed system. We'll discuss about fault tolerance using active replication and using primary backup. So in the previous session, we already discussed about physical redundancy. So we saw that with physical redundancy, some extra equipment is added to make it possible for the system as a whole to tolerate the loss or malfunctioning of certain components. Now there are two ways to organize these processes. So we can achieve physical redundancy using active replication and using primary backup. So either one of the ways. So with respect to active replication, when active replication is used, all the processes are used all the time as servers and that too in parallel in order to hide faults completely. Whereas with respect to primary backup, this, this particular scheme just uses one processor as a server and it replaces that particular server in case it fails with a backup server. Now there are certain issues that are faced by active and primary replication. They are the degree of replication that is required with respect to each redundancy, the average and worst case performance in the absence of faults and the average and worst case performance when a fault occurs. Now we'll see more in detail about active replication. Fault tolerance in electronic circuits can be achieved using active replication. Now consider this example. We have a circuit over here with three devices A, B and C. All these devices are placed in a sequence. If any one of them is faulty, then the output will also be faulty. So active replication can be achieved using something called as triple modular redundancy or in short TMR. So what happens is each device in TMR is replicated thrice. So this particular device will be replicated Thrice. Following each stage in the circuit is a triplicated water. So we have something called as a water. Now let's try and understand this. We have this particular sequence which will be replicated thrice. So we have the second replication and the third replication. Now, this water is a circuit that has three inputs and one output. Now, here we can see only one input that is from A1. The second and the third input will be from A2 and A3. Whereas with respect to A1, the output of A1 goes as an input to V1 as well as V2 and V3. Similarly, the output of B1 goes as an input to B4, V5, V6. C1, the output of C1 goes as an input to V7, V8 and V9. Same with respect to device A2, B2 and C2. So there are three outputs, one which goes an input to V1, V2, V3 and so on and same with respect to the other devices that is A3, B3 and C3. So the output of A3 causes an input to V1, V2 and V3 and so on. So we can see that each water is a circuit that has three inputs and one output. If two or more of the inputs are the same then the output would be equal to the input that is given to the water. That means out of these three inputs for each water, two of the waters have to be 
correct. Only in that case, the output of the voter would be correct. If all the three inputs are different, then in that case, that the output of the voter will be undefined. And this kind of design is called as triple modular redundancy. Now suppose that this particular element that is or this, uh, the device A1 fails. So if A1 fails, the output of A1 also will be wrong. So wrong input goes to V1, wrong input goes to V2 and wrong input goes to V3. But each of the voter that is voter V1, V2 and V3 get two identical inputs and one wrong input. So V1 gets a correct one from A2 and A3. V2 gets a correct input from A2 and A3 and V3 also gets a correct input from A2 and V3. Whereas the input that is given to V1, V2 and V3 by A1 is wrong. But even though the output in this case of V1 would be correct. Since for a voter only two inputs are required to be correct. So the effect of A1 failing is completely masked so that the inputs to B1, B2 and B3 are exactly the same as they would have been if no fault had occurred. Now let's assume that B3 and C1 fails along with A1. Now in this case also, these effects are also masked so the final output are still the correct. So you can see, even though there are certain failures in the devices, this device has failed, over here this device has failed, and over here this device has failed. So if the replication was not done, wherein this is the replication part, if this replication was not done, then the output would have been wrong. But since there is an active replication in the entire system, the output remains to be correct. Now, we were talking about devices. Now, what if the voter itself fails? So, we consider an example wherein V1 itself fails, that is the voter itself fails. The input to B1 will also be wrong. But as long as everything else works fine, that is B2 and B3 will produce the same output and V4, V5 and V6 that is water V4, water 4, water 5 and water 6 will produce the correct result into the stage 3. So basically a fault in water V1 effectively is no different than a fault in the device B1. So now this triple modular redundancy can be used in chips. So making use of TMR in chips, it makes the chip highly reliable. So the output remains correct in the chip. Now how much of replication is required? So this answer depends on the amount of fault tolerance that is desired. A system is said to be k fault tolerant if it can survive faults in k components and still meet its specification. If the components, let's say processes fail silently then having k plus 1 of them is enough to provide k fault tolerance. So if key, if k of them is so basically if k of them simply stop then the answer from the other can be used 
Now we move to the next technique that is fault tolerance using primary backup. So in this case, the essential idea of the primary backup method is that at one instance, one server is the primary and does all the work. Only if this primary fails, then the backup takes over. So this is a complete different system as compared to the active replication. Where in active replication, we had servers simultaneously working in parallel. Whereas in the primary backup, we have only two systems. One is the primary and one is the backup. So only if the primary fails, then the backup takes charge. So let's see at the advantages of primary backup fault tolerance has two major advantages over active replication. The first one, it is simpler during normal operations since messages just go to one server that is the primary server and not to a whole group of servers. So in this case, the problem associated with ordering the messages also is resolved. In practice, it requires fewer machines because at any instant, one primary and one backup is needed. So the downside of primary backup is it works poorly in the presence of Byzantine failures in which the primary erroneously claims to be working effectively. Also, recovery from a primary failure can be complex and very time consuming. So let's have a look at the primary backup solution. How does it work? So what happens is the client sends a message to the primary. So it makes a request. So here the primary does the work and then sends the updated message to the backup. When the backup gets the message, it does the work and then sends an acknowledgement back to the primary. And when this acknowledgement arrives, the primary sends the reply back to the client. So this is how fault tolerance is taken care in terms of primary backup. So we have one primary server and one backup server. So only in case primary fails, the backup will take charge. Now, let's have a look at the effect of primary crash at various moments during an RPC. So the primary crashes before doing the work. So basically, before step two, if the primary crashes. So in such case, no harm is done. The client will time out and then retry. So if it tries often enough, it will eventually get the backup and the work will be done exactly once. What if the primary crashes after doing the work but before sending the update? So after step 2, if it fails between step 2 and step 3. So in this case, when the backup takes over, the request comes in again. And the work will be done once again. So that means the work is being carried out second time. If the primary crashes after step 4 but before step 6. So in this case the work may end up being done three times. Once by the primary, once by the backup as a result of step 3 and once after the backup becomes the primary. Only if the request carry identifiers or some kind of a nonce or a number, it may be possible to ensure that the work is done only twice. By getting it done exactly once, it is difficult to impossible. Okay, now the practical problems with the primary backup approach is when to have a switch over from the primary to the backup. So what the backup could do is, the backup could send a message to the primary asking, are you alive? So that is A-Y-A -A message. Periodically, 
to the primary. So in cases where primary fail to respond to AYA within a certain time, then the backup could take over. What if the primary has not crashed but is merely very slow? Now there are no ways to distinguish between a slow primary one and a one that has gone down. So when the backup takes over, the primary really stops trying to act like the primary. Ideally the backup and the primary should have a protocol to discuss this but it is hard to negotiate with a dead processor or dead server. The best solution is a hardware mechanism in which the backup can forcibly st stop or reboot the primary. A variant of primary backup is making use of a dual ported disk. So what is this dual ported disk? A dual ported disk is shared between the primary and the secondary. So in this config, when the primary gets a request, it writes the request to the disk before doing any work and also writes the request or the results to the disk. So in this case, no messages to or from the backup are needed. So in case the primary crashes, the back, backup can see the state of the world by reading the disk. So the disadvantage of dual ported disk is there is only one disk. So if this, this disk also fails, then everything is lost. So at the cost of an extra equipment and performance, the disk could also be replicated and all writes could be done to both the disks. 